Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. We begin our video with the story of the most impudent patient imaginable. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. You want to go to the hospital in an ambulance? Okay. I was in an apartment building for work earlier today when I saw an ambulance pull up to the front door and two paramedics come out. I opened the door to let them inside and they proceeded up to the unit of their call. I wasn't deliberately eavesdropping, but the walls are paper thin so I could hear the entire conversation. EMT, did you call for an ambulance? P, yeah, I'm feeling kind of anxious and I need them to give me something to calm me down. EMT, you do realize the hospital is right across the street, right? P. Yeah, but I didn't want to walk. Context. This building is literally across the street from the hospital, separated by a seldom used road. I don't mean down the road or a couple blocks away. You can literally see the front entrance of the hospital from the front door of the apartment building. If I'm being generous, it's about 100 meters door to door. Normally, an ambulance costs money, but this individual was forthcoming enough to inform the paramedics that he was on government assistance and that the program covered ambulance costs for transport to the nearest hospital. The paramedics were audibly annoyed at the situation, essentially being used as a free taxi to get across the street in the rain for a non-emergency, but they end up taking this guy down to the ambulance. When I finally left the building several minutes later, the paramedics were still sitting outside with the patient doing their assessment, hooking him up to a blood pressure and pulse monitor, the patient was annoyed that they wouldn't just drop him off at the hospital, but policies are policies and the paramedics could be liable were a medical emergency to occur en route to the hospital. As I drove away, they were still sitting outside. A part of me hopes they're still out there, assessing, hours later. And our next story. I thought I was done with my revenge, till my former boss gave me a second chance. Part 1 where I caused my old boss to lose a buttload of money due to software piracy. A little context. I'm a teacher with a degree in advertising and have been involved with IT for the past 20-something years, although I found my love for teaching just some 10 years ago. I passed through a lot of schools in the meantime, from the big ones to the smallest ones, and accumulated a bunch of experience both in the classroom and behind the scenes, designing workbooks, video courses, learning platforms, and such. So I started thinking it was past the time to migrate to a management position. The opportunity came in a prestigious school of digital art, and I became its teaching manager, overseeing all the teachers and the intern learning routines. It was a hard but honest job for a time. Soon it became obvious that my boss was not exactly what he tried to present to students and employees. He would display bursts of anger and antagonize the team, demanding impossible results and asking about tasks that he never assigned, but somehow was our job to guess. One time during a meeting, he grabbed a big chair and pretended to throw it across the room. It was his idea of a joke. Nobody even flinched because nobody doubted for a second that he was capable of actually doing the deed. Needless to say, nobody laughed as well. In my country, employers may hold employees' contracts up to three months, which means that for 90 days you have no job security and may be fired at any moment without any consequence to the company, which my boss reminded everyone all the time, half-joking, trying to keep everybody on their toes. He actually excused me from this treatment. He had this bad habit of treating the managers differently and gave me constant praise for a good job till the day my temp contract ended meaning I was an actual employee with full benefits and couldn't be fired without him paying me everything the law stated. So it really surprised me when he started the hostile treatment not 24 hours after my temporary contract ended and the full employment began. Gone were the praises and in their place came screams, bad reviews, and more and more insane demands. We paid an outside company to do maintenance on the classroom PCs every week, but somehow bugs and crashes were now my fault. One time he made me stay after hours, on a Saturday, after all students and staff had left and prohibited me from going home before I had all computers running smoothly. The abuse continued and actually intensified. One day I started to feel chest pains and my left arm went completely numb. 
While my friend called for an ambulance, I retreated to my boss's office, at the time being occupied by his fiance, and calmly told her, Don't mind me, I think I'm having a heart attack, so I'll just lay here for a few minutes so the students can't see me. Of course, she went nuts after this. The good news, it wasn't a heart attack, but an anxiety attack, and it wasn't the last one. I was 36 at the time, and it was the first time I saw my mom cry since my dad passed more than 20 years prior. From, of course, a heart attack. I decided enough was enough, so I gave my 30-day notice, citing health issues. I hadn't yet completed six months working there. I sat down with my boss, didn't blame him in any way, but said the stress was making me worry about leaving my family too soon, and gave him every guarantee he needed that I'd work through my entire notice in order to complete every single project we started since my hiring. Less than a week left till my last day, he called me in his office to show the company's new career plans. I don't know the equivalent term in English, but it's a path planned by the company for the growth of each position. So you see, that's what you're going to earn in a few months. That is, if you stop being an F-word and just do your bleeping job. I couldn't believe it. After the abuse, all the toxicity, I tried to go the higher road and end everything on a good note, and he called my health issues being an F-word? I was done. I told him to just deduce the next few days from my final payment and left. Now for the revenge. Remember how I introduced him to a friend and he actually hired the guy? On my final days, I announced my boss I would open my own school after leaving, but failed to mention that this other employee was my business partner. So when my friend asked himself for his 30-day notice, our boss went livid. He all but threw out my friend, telling him to never put his feet there again and leave immediately. According to the law, that means he had to pay for that whole month, plus every remaining day he worked before, plus commissions. Adding to that, my own last payment, which came with six months of benefits. He had more than enough to start our new venture, but that's not the revenge. He actually made us sign a sort of NDA with a bunch of illegal clauses, which made the whole contract invalid, preventing us from revealing any company secrets during or after our time with them, at the risk of being fined $30,000, around $6,000 at the time. However, no contract in the world may prevent one, at least in my country, from reporting any illegal activities, which is why I didn't worry one bit when I reported him and his school for having 50-plus PCs running on pirate versions of Windows, Office, the whole Adobe Suite, Revit, Cinema 4D, 3DS Max, and lots of other very expensive software. Not long before this, a big and traditional chain of stores had gone bankrupt in our state for having to pay retroactively fines upon fines on Windows alone. So it's an understatement to say that the government was taking piracy pretty serious at the time. It gets funnier when you realize that the reported person receives an email with the whole complaint, apart from the author of the report, the minute it's filed, so he can prepare his defense. His response wasn't at all unexpected. Some five minutes after our report, a similar email came into our inbox reporting us for 30 unlicensed copies of Windows and many other programs. My business partner still talked to the finance manager on our old job, and knowing that our ex-boss would probably be right beside him, fuming and screaming, decided to send him a picture of our only classroom with no computer in sight. We decided to specialize in classes about comic book making, which dispense computers, and whenever we would host a class that demanded it, we'd ask our students to bring their own. A few weeks later, I heard that the whole remaining staff abandoned ship leaving him with only an intern and a few teachers without permanent contracts. My former boss actually kept tabs on us and learned that some of his teachers were contacting us to host special classes, started to blackmail them, threatening to terminate their contracts if they insisted on doing business with us, even though there was no exclusivity clause in their contracts. Some of them called his bluff, and he had to pay another crap load of money on breach of contracts alone. Time went by, and I hear the guy is counting his pennies and struggling to keep afloat. He used to open full classes each six months, occupying every date and time available. Now he could hardly fill a turn. Started holding only night classes, and not even every day. Half the week, he closes his doors, not having enough students nor the money to pay employees on these days. Before I left, he'd paid $40,000 on the architectural project alone to expand the business within a year. 
But now I hear he was considering closing his doors and offering only online classes, even before the pandemic. And now for part two, where years after my revenge, I made my ex-boss pay a bunch load of money, this time on legal fees. First of all, I need to say that my own school has closed its doors. Me and my friend were not a good fit, as business partners at least, and now we're not even friends. That's life. We cashed out, sold what could be sold, and each went on to live our lives. Some months later, I found out our ex-boss was suing us. Our school, that is, which as I mentioned, didn't even exist anymore. My ex-friend's sister, who's also his lawyer, contacted me and told me about it. I couldn't find anything on the public record since the lawsuit was running on court-ordered sigil. I talked to my own lawyer and she said, if they didn't cite you directly, pretend you know nothing about the matter. So I ignored the issue for a few years. During lockdown, the appointed official finally found me at home and served me. That also gave me access to my boss's claims. Since I had 15 days to prepare my defense, my wife found me laughing out loud in front of the computer. His claims were absolutely ridiculous. He claimed I stole his courses and used as proof a print from our now offline site, side by side with his own, saying something in the lines of, it becomes obvious that both schools have the same courses. However, he presented no explanation of these similarities besides the names, which weren't even the same. We had a segment of trainings under the umbrella graphic design, but no class with that specific name, for example, and no other class on any of his main subjects. Also, most of our classes were in the topic of comic books, which he never worked with. He also called us cynical for daring to compete with him on the same market, even if it was my own previous experience on the learning sector that landed me the job at his firm in the first place. At one point, the document cited a statement from our site where we said we took our previous experience as a way to learn with our mistakes and do differently and call it a confession of plagiarism. I asked my lawyer to let me write my own defense, leaving to her the task to translate it to lawyerism. She actually copy-pasted my full statement, saying she couldn't have argued better. I put on paper all the repulse I felt, cited all my experience with teaching, and rebuked every single one of his claims with facts and actual proof, attaching printed conversations, saved emails, and bringing attention to his own lacking of proof. The judge tossed the case and made him pay all the legal fees, including my lawyers. He could have avoided it had he just entered the lawsuit on small claims court, but since he wanted the 30 k from the NDA plus damages and sigil, he had it coming. Just another shove of dirt on his coffin. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.